systematically, United States airmen are playing their part in wiping the face of northern France clear of the Luftwaffe. These pictures were taken on a typical raid over German aerodromes by marauder aircraft of the United States Air Force. In Battle of Britain days, Nazi airfields in plenty lay within a mile or two of the French coast. They've been pushed back. Nowadays, the enemy has anti-aircraft galore, but no airfields in this part of the fortress of Europe. The first airfield on the program was well on the way to Paris at Beauvais. Here the camera shows something of what the Allied air forces are doing almost daily. Further and further south the enemy bases his aircraft, but not for long are they out of our range. results of a time bomb explosion in the new post office building in Naples. The cameraman happened to be within a few yards of the building at the time and he promptly reacted by shooting these scenes of the immediate aftermath. The Germans planted time bombs in many places in Naples and elsewhere before they left. And as at the post office, they've caused a number of deaths and many casualties. Thousands of Italians have been applying to the Allies for interviews for jobs. Scenes like this are common, apparently. Meanwhile, all over southern Italy, the Allies are taking over abandoned enemy airfields and putting them into working order for advanced aerial action against the Germans. Pretty well 24 hours a day, our bombers are carrying out sweeps over German-held positions in northern Italy, smashing up roads and railways, and generally disorganizing his lines of communications. A major obstacle in the advance to Rome was the Volturno River. Here is the initial crossing of the river by units of the 5th Army. The Volturno was a heavily defended German defence line and the enemy put up a stiff fight before the British and Americans finally forced it. This is one of the numerous bridgeheads established by the 5th Army. The pommel is of pure crystal, the hilt wound with nearly 200 feet of 18 karat gold wire. The new Russian ambassador, Mr. Fedor Gusev, was greatly impressed with the beauty of the sword, as were all who saw it. Meanwhile, 2,000 miles away, in Stalingrad itself, a moving ceremony was taking place in honor of those who fought in the defense of that famous city. First came the presentation of certificates of honor and medals to heroes still among the living. Then, homage was paid to those who laid down their lives in that epic battle.
but the dead belong to the past. The bitter struggle of the living goes on. Relentlessly, the Soviet armies are driving the Huns westward. Already Hitler has lost two-thirds of the devastated Russian territory over which his panzers swept during the first year of the war in Russia. Stalingrad is at last avenged, a hundredfold, yet still the invincible might of Russia sweeps off. 